Archbishop Tarbo is one of my heroes in the uh, Anglican uh, communion. Uh, uh, yes, it is. <laughs> I'm not going to stop that. Um, he, he is Archbishop of Southern Africa. He's uh, the latest in an extraordinary line of archbishops, including Desmond Tutu and others, and um, has stood up for human rights, for the dignity of the human being in the most remarkable way and led a church that I've found to be full of love and welcome. And Your Grace, when we pray in the Lord's Prayer or in this week between Ascension and Pentecost, thy kingdom come or your kingdom come or whatever you say in Zulu Khosa or whatever else, what in your mind is what, what you're envisaging? What, what happens? Your Grace, thank you very much. Uh, you know, when we pray, Thy Kingdom come, uh, I'm, I'm full of excitement. Uh, I, I feel almost like uh, Tabo. It's, it's not about you, it's not about the church even, uh, but it's about really trying to discern with others the voice of God uh, in South Africa. And when I'm tempted to say, oh my goodness, uh, I'm being clobbered left, right and centre for <laughs> <laughs> criticising our, our government of the day, and then we say, thy kingdom come, I say, hey, wait, wait. yes, of course, I'm not seeking uh, the kingdom of uh, the political leadership, I'm not seeking the kingdom of the wealth creators, I'm seeking God's kingdom. And so I, I really feel relieved that I'm participating uh, in God's mission and, uh, and His will, uh, you know, I just chuckle, I mean, His will will be done through this uh, uh, tiny you know, South African, tucked it somewhere in Cape Town, and a number of God's people. So there's a relief and uh, there's a sense that I am part of a bigger, bigger prayer set by not only myself but God's people. And I, I mean that is such an exciting answer. If I use a word that has resonances of an extraordinary way in South Africa perhaps as much as many, almost all countries in the world, which is the word liberate. Yes. If I, when I was listening to you just then, the word that came to mind was, when we pray thy kingdom come, it liberates you from self-obsession and it liberates you for the service of God. Is, is that, does that make sense? It's, it's, it's really apt because I feel liberated, I feel uh, energized, I feel like, hey, my, my struggles are pale compared to, you know, praying that God's kingdom, God's rule should envelope this or that particular situation. Mm. You, you know, sometimes uh, when I do the off offices alone, uh, there's another chorus that comes, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm. And, um, and the, and all, almost like all uh, the answers will be given unto you. And not all the answers about maybe the material or the immediate, but uh, all God's people will be put together so that God's will and mission uh, will be realized and uh, all people will be given uh, hope to transcend their daily uh, challenges. There could be food in our context. It could be water in Cape in Town, Cape Town, Town at, the at the moment. Uh, it could be inequality. It could be environmental uh, uh, issues. Mm. I think that's um, it's an extraordinary thing. I love that word transcend that you just used. I think you and I both know with your huge role in the Anglican Communion as well as in the church in Southern Africa that we both spend so much time in, developed in issues of structures or programs or budgets or 
strategies and then this transcends, it takes us just completely out of it. Exactly, exactly. It takes you into uh, another realm that, uh, yes, the budget, the structures are important, but there is something uh, bigger than those budget. And, and each time I focus on the budget and the structure, you know, my energy just goes <laughs> 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 But when I say, to what end? To what end? Lord, this is your messy church. Please help. Uh, you, you know, it takes me outside of that. And I said, oh, yeah, it is. It is his kingdom manifesting itself in the small detail of the budget, the structure, but always taking me to a higher level to say, hey, you're not alone. Uh, this is a God of providence because later thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow enormous responsibility but a joy to participate and if I go back finally to something a long time ago in your own life say in the 80s when the situation in southern Africa before the end of apartheid was very very different can you give an example of where this prayer thy kingdom come you felt this did you began to see your the difficulties being transcended, the liberation? Uh, you know, at a personal level, I mean, I remember at the age of sixteen, uh, being chased by a, a, a van or this police uh, armored uh, car, uh, wearing uniform because we are protesting against uh, Africans as a medium of instruction and this. Ahmad car was really coming at me. I walked fast, it drove fast. I walked slow, it drove fast. And then I ran away and I hid myself under uh, the, uh, a car where the mechanic was fixing it on that particular street. And I said to him, they want to kill me. And then he came out and they said to him, where's the terrorist? And the mechanic came. I won't repeat uh, what he said. I mean, he was very crude, but he said, you guys are looking for a terrorist uh, from a young schoolboy. There are terrorists out there. Why don't you get a terrorist? And I prayed there and said, Lord, I'm in your hand because I mean, they could have just clobbered the mechanic and me. And then uh, they left. And it was during when a number of my colleagues were killed in 1976. So, I mean, I... I felt it at a personal level that indeed uh, I felt his rule, I felt his hand. And generally in South Africa, uh, we prayed, uh, we lamented, we cried, and we saw uh, democracy come not with uh, too much blood because we thought now we're going to fight for our liberation. But the churches, the mosques, the shoes and others came together and, and we prayed. And as Christians, we're in the forefront saying, Lord, let thy kingdom come. And there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.